What is it like to be detained and interrogated by the police all because you're black and not just once, but more than 50 times? That is the focus of a powerful article by journalist Desmond Cole. It is the cover story, as I mentioned, in the new issue of Toronto Life. It's called The Skin I'm In. From Oshawa to Kingston to here in Toronto, Desmond Cole details the interactions he's had with police, why they happened, and the effect they've had on him. He's with me in studio now. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Matt. What is it like to be stopped and interrogated by police? When it first started happening to me, I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, It's confusing is the right answer, I think, for that. You um, start questioning why this is happening to you. And if it happens once as a one-off, maybe you don't think about it afterwards. When it becomes a pattern and when it happens, not when you're, you know, driving even or when you're just but when you're walking down the street when you're standing in public with friends and you're singled out um when when you just find yourself doing the most random normal everyday things it becomes infuriating it becomes scary because you wonder why people who are sworn to uphold the law and who are armed um, and who are suspicious of you, why you keep attracting their attention for some reason. You start this piece with a story about what happened when you were nine. Um, and you're in the car with your family, and you're pulled over by police uh, because somebody throws a tissue at the window, apparently. That's right, yeah. This unfolds, and after the police let you go, your father says something. What does he say? My father turned to my cousin, who was the one who threw the tissue out the window, after there was complete silence in the car, by the way, after the police officer drove off who stopped us. And my father broke the silence by saying to my cousin, you realize everyone in this car is black, don't you? And that was a real important moment for me because what my father was trying to say was that we were at a higher risk for having something bad happen to us because we were all black in that car and that the police were probably looking for us to do something wrong, even if we weren't. And he was trying to make my cousin understand that that was a dangerous situation. This is a a story that in many ways is about um, you and your interactions with police. It's also, as I said, about what it's like to be black in Toronto. For people who, who don't experience this, what is it like? I can never really fully explain to people who have never had this happen what it is like, but You know, I I say in the piece that I'm a prisoner in my own city. And I know that that feels pretty strong for a lot of people. But just imagine that you actually cannot go anywhere in your city without somebody who protects the public and upholds the law thinking that person's about to do something wrong. That makes you paranoid. It makes you scared. It makes you start second guessing yourself even when you're not doing anything wrong. And so it is a sort of prison. It's not just police. You talk about bars and clubs. You talk about the interaction you have with people on the street. How wide is that experience? It's everywhere. I mean, the first time I came to Toronto, I went to a fancy store on Bloor Street, upscale place, and I was followed around the store, and I was so angry and humiliated that I left, and I've never gone back. I've been kicked out of bars or refused entry into bars by bouncers who don't give you a reason. They single you out. And again, you know, people say, oh, how do you know you're black? It's because you're black, Desmond. Yeah, if it happens one time and it's just inexplicable, fine. This hasn't happened to me one time. It's a pattern. And so this is about racism and the way that black people are looked at in general, not just by the police. What is the the effect of that? You talked about feeling like you're a prisoner in your own city. Um, The long-term effect of, of that kind of stigmatization is what, do you believe? I believe that what it does is it can change the way that people look at ourselves, but it also changes the way that other people look at us. Mm. So one of the long-term effects of this is that now you have something like police carding in Toronto, which uh, over-documents the interactions of police with black people. But what you have is a society being like, well, is the police stopping black people's normal? In fact, I probably want the police to stop more black people. So you have this reinforced notion that even if you're not doing anything wrong, you deserve to be targeted simply because of the color of your skin. It's as if we've forgotten what racism is because we're so preoccupied with stereotypes about black people. Or that we believe that that doesn't exist. And there are a lot of people who are listening who say, you know what, that can't be that bad. There's no way that this is because he just happened to be walking down the street. He had to look like somebody. There had to be something going on. And this is a city in which people get along. And you talk about this in the piece. You say there is this idea that Toronto is a post-racial city. That kind of thinking is ridiculously naive. Why? Because simply 
existing in the same space together does not mean that we are respecting one another. It doesn't mean that we're treating one another with a sense of humanity and, you know, curiosity for who you are as a person. Uh, this is happening in the most multicultural city, perhaps in the whole world. And I want that to be a wake up call to people that racism is not simply about what you see on the surface when you walk down the street. It's about people having different opportunities for work. It's about people being treated equally or not by the police, by the people that they have to interact with in their daily lives. So it's a lot deeper than, and, and you know the other thing, Matt, yeah. people think racism is like, I see somebody and I call them a racial slur. No, racism can be just having lowered expectations for black people and expecting them to commit more crimes and therefore justifying that the police should be stopping them. That also is racism because it's the racism of lowered expectations because you looked at me and made a stereotype. Let's go back to the interactions with police. Um, there's a lot of talk around the possibility of change with a new chief of police. Don't know whether he's read this piece or not. I hope he has. What would you want him to take away? Because we, we've spoken with uh, the chief, we've spoken with deputy chiefs about the matter of carding, about racial profiling. What would you want them to take away from reading about your own experience? That it's not isolated. That this is not an accident that this happened to one black man who then wrote a really interesting piece about it. In this a is... mainstream magazine that's gone over, all over the world. And yeah. thank God for the opportunity. And I'm very grateful to Toronto Life. I hope everyone goes out and makes this the best-selling uh, edition of Toronto Life ever. But... Yesterday, or the day before when he was uh, announced, Chief uh, Designate Mark Saunders used the term collateral damage to describe people who are being negatively affected by carding. Matt, he's black. I'm black. You're black. He was talking about black people. Mm. Use the words. Talk about who is being hurt. Don't say collateral damage because these are human beings that you're affecting and you need to talk about how it's affecting them. That, that's what I did in my piece. I wanted to get to the emotional level so that we stop talking about people as being these units and start talking about their humanity. You end by talking about what happens when you are um, making your way around the city and you see other black people. What do you do? <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, my parents would pass people on the street in Oshawa. There are not always a lot of black people in Oshawa. And I would always see my, my parents nod to people on the street who are black. And I'd say, Mom, Dad, did, did you, do you know that person? And they'd say, no. <laughs> and and I, it was just a way of expressing solidarity and seeing another black person and saying, you know, I see you. And I do the same thing now when I, when I, when I pass other black people on the street. I hope everybody reads this piece, and I hope there are a number of people who should read it, including the chief, including the mayor, and those on the police services board. But the response thus far has been um, extraordinary. Congratulations. Matt, thank you so much.